Hello and welcome to this summary of everything you need to understand if you're studying the poem We Refugees by Benjamin Zephaniah, which is included in Ed Excel's poetry anthology titled Belonging. Okay, so it's one of the major poems that explores the theme of belonging and alienation. Now, if you are studying this poem, it's really important to be aware of contextual factors. In other words, things surrounding the time of the poem's writing and also things related to the author of the poem, Sir Benjamin Zephaniah specifically, which will likely influence some of the themes explored within this poem. So before we get into analysing each of the different stanzas in depth, let's look at context that you should be aware of relating to Benjamin Zephaniah himself and also, of course, other factors that influenced him. So firstly, always remember Benjamin Zephaniah, who is a modern, he's a contemporary poet. He was born in 1958 to a Barbadian postman, so his dad was a postman and he was from Barbados, okay, as well as a Jamaican nurse who was his mother, okay, so he is Caribbean in heritage and descent. Now, he grew up both in Jamaica, however, he migrated, so he emigrated to Birmingham, which is a major city within the UK when he was young. And he wrote this particular poem, We Refugees, in 2000, okay? That's also when it was published. Now, it's really important to bear in mind that Benjamin Zephaniah has always identified himself as being an outsider. Indeed, even in the field of academia, he's also been an outsider. Don't forget, he's also a black man. So, of course, there is also prejudice that he has faced throughout his time, okay? So, remember that Benjamin Zephaniah has dyslexia and this affected his performance in school. He went to school at a time when dyslexia was not really well recognized nice and this consequently led him to leave school when he was just 14 years old and then he moved from Birmingham to London in 1979 at 21 and published his first poetry collection in 1980 okay so he's very prolific and he has been on the scene for a while okay now in terms of Zephaniah and when it comes to traveling and emigrating okay because that's one of the major themes that's illustrated within his poem We Refugees his mother came to England on a boat a really famous boat called the Windrush okay so so hopefully you've heard of the Windrush. If you haven't, it's basically a time following this end of the Second World War when Britain was in huge need of manpower. It was in huge need of lots of people to come in and help rebuild the country as a result of uh, all the losses it faced during the war. And it called on countries, especially Caribbean countries within the Commonwealth. And there was one particular ship, a huge ship called the Windrush that was sent to uh, different parts of the Caribbean, primarily Jamaica and other bits of the Caribbean. And lots of uh, Caribbean people migrated during this period in the 1950s to England in order to work and to fill these roles that were vacant and needed filling, okay? So his mother did come as part of that Windrush generation, okay? Now, the final thing to bear in mind is uh, Zephaniah himself has faced significant discrimination as an outsider. So as I've mentioned, he is um, an outsider from an academic perspective. He suffers from dyslexia, okay? But of course he sees this as something that actually gives him a very unique perspective, okay? And in fact, you should uh, read a, 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 a text that he's written called a Young and dyslexic you've got it going on which we've done lots of analysis on so do make sure you check out our analysis video on that however in spite of that he does recognize that his dyslexia does make him somewhat of an outsider in the academic field this coupled with him ble being a black man also has made him really face lots of prejudice and so this poem we Refugees shows that he empathises with outsiders, people looking down on him out due to factors that he cannot control and people really um, seeing him as something that is negative, a scourge on society and he challenges these stereotypes and he challenges this, this perspective, especially when it comes to refugees within We Refugees. But of course, this perspective is all the more clearer to him because he knows what it's like to be an outsider, okay? So as I mentioned, context is really, really important when it comes to understanding this poem and the contents of this poem. So when you're writing an essay about this, you do need to be aware of this information, which I've put here in the mind map. But of course, you also need to know the poem in detail. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to analyse each stanza within the poem and look at language, form and structure that's used by Zephaniah within We Refugees. So let's read through this poem. We Refugees. I come from a musical place where they shoot me for my song and my brother has been tortured by my brother in my land. I come from a beautiful place where they hate my shade of skin. They don't like the way I pray. 
and they ban free poetry. I come from a beautiful place where girls cannot go to school. There, you are told what to believe, and even young boys must grow beards. I come from a great old forest. I think it's now a field, and the people I once knew are not there now. We can all be refugees. Nobody is safe. All it takes is a mad leader or no rain to bring forth food. We can all be refugees. We can all be told to go. We can be hated by someone for being someone. I come from a beautiful place where the valley floods each year and each year, the hurricane tells us that we must keep moving on. I come from an ancient place. All of my family were born there and I would like to go there, but I really want to live. I come from a sunny, sandy place where tourists go to darken skin. And dealers like to sell guns there. I just can't tell you what's the price. I am told I have no country now. I am told I am a lie. I am told that modern history books made me forget my name. We can all be refugees. Sometimes it only takes a day. Sometimes it only takes a handshake. Or or a paper that is signed. We all came from refugees. Nobody simply just appeared. Nobody's here without a struggle. And why should we live in fear of the weather or the troubles? We all came here from somewhere. So this poem takes the perspective of a refugee. It actually gives them a voice. And it really shows us that literally anybody can be a refugee. So this poem is also really powerful in educating those who assume that refugees, you know, they've somehow engineered their futures to be the way they are. All they have of the options, it shows that lots of us can be vulnerable to this particular situation. And of course, it creates a lot of empathy for the reader for the plight and the suffering of refugees. So let's analyse each of the stanzas within this poem in more detail. Make sure you pay attention to the name of the poem, We Refugees, because what this does is this inclusive pronoun, especially the word we, makes us realize that anybody can be a refugee it puts us in this vulnerable position and it shows and universalizes the experience of being a refugee okay so what benjamin zephaniah is trying to show is literally anybody can be a refugee it's not restricted to race it's not restricted to culture people can be simply unlucky and find themselves in this terrible position now in the first verse the speaker begins by stating i come from a musical place The first person pronoun I really is powerful in creating a personal tone and making us as readers instantly connect with the speaker. Also, the verb come implies what is often a traumatic process of going to a new country, migrating to a new country after fleeing one's original home country is really powerful and also, of course, as I mentioned, traumatic. They state they come from a musical place. Now, the adjective musical is important in highlighting how melodious and beautiful the home that the refugees left behind can be. Okay, so they're not there out of choice. They've left a place that they really loved. It was melodious, musical, but they had to go. Also, the repetition of my brother in the third and fourth line of the first stanza emphasizes how absurd it is that people from the same country can turn on each other. So refugees tend to also run away from their countries due to tyrants, terrible leaders, dictators who ethnically look like them, but torture them and mistreat them. Also, the violent verb tortured suggests that many refugees tend to flee their countries because of brutal, violent, tyrannical leaders in the country. Moreover, in line number one, I come from is also repeated in line number one of stanza two and the first line of stanza three. Okay, so this repetition shows that this poem is meant to educate readers on the variety of reasons and circumstances why people have to flee their countries and become refugees. In the second verse, we learn that this particular speaker comes from a beautiful place and the assonance of a in a beautiful place reveals how much a speaker misses their home country. Also, they state that even if where they come from is beautiful, it's a place where they hate the shade of my skin, they don't like the way I pray, the ban free poetry. So here, hate, don't like, and ban, these negative sh- terms show how the speaker's home country is oppressive and brutal, the reasons why they're now a refugee. Also, the reference to skin, prey, and poetry reveals that someone's ethnicity, religion, and their intellectual beliefs can cause them to become a target. Just like that, they can have to leave their own country. Again, this is what this is showing, is it's creating empathy for us as readers who realise that there's a lot of things that happen outside of somebody's control that lead them to be a refugee. They haven't chosen to be the status. Also, the reference to ban-free poetry. So the juxtaposition of the words ban and free 
amplifies the contrast between these ideas. Now, in the third stanza, the speaker talks about other instances where people become refugees. So there's some countries where girls cannot go to school. And this declarative sentence reveals gender inequality. And in fact, this is one of the reasons why, for instance, Malala Yousafzai is so famous because she was championing the right of young girls in places like Pakistan and Afghanistan to go to school. But that led her to have to flee and become a refugee. Then the speaker states, there you are told what to believe and that you are told reflects the realities of living in a dictatorship. We don't have freedom of speech or thought, you're told what to think. And if you push back against this, you are either killed or you have to flee. Furthermore, the speaker references how some countries, young boys must grow beards. So this is a reference to an extremely strict Islamic custom that the, that exists in certain countries where young, even young boys have to follow a very strict idea of Islam. And sometimes this can be very repressive. In the next stanza, the speaker talks about a great old forest, and which is now a field. Now, the contrast in the relative size of a forest, which is huge versus a field, shows how other people become refugees due to the destruction of their natural habitats, either by natural disasters or even companies that come in and cut down forests for commercial reasons, for example, to sell logs, but then this robs these people of their homes. Okay, so this has now given us another reason why some people become refugees. Then the speaker talks about the people I once knew are not there now. So there's ambiguity here because it could be that the people that the speaker once knew have escaped just like them. So obviously they've left their home or they may have died as a result of losing their homes. In the following stanza, the speaker states, we can all be refugees. The collective pronoun, just like in the title, we refugees, shows the speaker reflects that becoming a refugee can literally happen to anyone. It's just merely a matter of luck. And again, what this is meant to do is make us empathize and also sympathize with refugees. Then this statement is interesting because it breaks the structure of the poem. So before the previous stanzas began with I come from, but now it's started with we can all be refugees. So this breaks the structure of the poem, straying also from the quatrains, okay, so the four line stanzas previously, to a stanza that's eight lines long and it doesn't start with I come from. Also, we learned that, of course, leaders can cause people to become refugees, okay? So the speaker talks about mad leader. And remember, a leader is supposed to be somebody who's sane. It's supposed to be somebody who thinks things through, okay? So there's dissonance created with the adjective mad because it's not a quality we associate with leadership. And again, what this is showing is really terrible leaders can come into um, power and this forces some people to have to run away from their countries. Then they mention how sometimes things like famine, okay, so no rain to bring forth food can cause people to leave, okay, so alliteration of F in forth and food reveals that famines and natural disasters can cause people to become refugees. Then the speaker states and repeats, we can, we can, we can, we can all be refugees, we can all be told to go, we can be hated by somebody. So the triple repetition of we can culminates into a powerful message that being a refugee is literally a last resort. It's not something that anyone can anticipate. Definitely they don't choose to be in that position. Then the reference and repetition of someone here really humanizes refugees in our eyes, okay? So it goes from, you know, what we sometimes hear in the news of all these bunches of refugees, and sometimes this can be quite dehumanizing. Now we really start humanizing them and understanding the different reasons why people become refugees. In the next stanza, the speaker talks about, I come from a beautiful place. And this is a repetition of the first line of stanza two. And the first line of stanza three, and this reiterates the speaker's pride in the home country. So they actually love the home that they had to leave, which is even more sad. Then they mention the valley of floods each year, as well as the hurricanes. So the semantic field of natural disasters in floods and hurricanes also shows how random freak accidents, random freak natural events cause people to become refugees. Their whole lives change because of a flood or a hurricane, and then they become homeless and they have to flee. Then the hurricane tells us that we must keep moving on. So this is interesting because nature is personified as speaking to the inhabitants, telling them to leave. In the next verse, we learn that the speaker comes from an ancient place and the assonance of A here in an ancient and place reveals the place that the speaker fled from is filled with lots of beautiful and powerful history. And this is an allusion to countries in the Middle East, especially, which had ancient civilizations like Iraq, Afghanistan, which sometimes in all of the confusion and of course also the chaos sometimes that war can bring, all of this gets destroyed. Also, the speaker talks about how all of my family were born there. So this is extremely emotive because the speaker has to leave a place that the whole entire ancestry came from and start afresh somewhere else. Again, here we see that refugees don't want to be refugees. They don't want to have moved, but they are forced to. 
the repetition of the word there reveals that they yearn to go back to their motherland but it's too dangerous to go back and they also state i really want to live and this declarative sentence is sad it's poignant because they don't have a choice of going back in the next stanza, they speak of coming from a sunny, sandy place and the siblings here suggest the home they left behind is beautiful and exotic. And they state this is where tourists go to darken the skin. So the home country is a tourist resort and the tourists who go there are actually really ignorant of the disasters and the problems, the turmoil happening in that country. Also, it's interesting this reference to how the tourists darken skin, but also other dealers. So, for example, arms dealers sell the guns there because there's a contrast between people going to the country to tan versus others going to buy illegal things like arms, guns, which shows that the country that this person has left is really lawless. There's no rule of law. Then the speaker just says, I can't tell you what the price. Okay, so and of course, this is referring to the guns. And what this is showing is the country that they've left behind. There is no moral compass there. Everything, both legal and illegal, can basically be obtained in this country for a fee, showing that the country they left behind is really corrupt. Then the speaker states, I am told I have no country now. I'm told I'm a lie. I'm told modern history books. I'll oh, forget my name. Here, the repetition of this passive voice, I am told, suggests ignorant people in his host countries, the country that they're now living in, are lecturing him about where he's come from, even if he knows more about the home country. And what this is showing is sometimes refugees are robbed of their voices. They're told what to think, they're told who they are. And this sometimes shows how powerless refugees can sometimes feel. Also, the repetition of the first person pronoun I shows how powerless and voiceless the speaker feels as a refugee because they're robbed of their autonomy to speak up for themselves. The reference to modern history books is powerful because it suggests this ad these set of adjectives suggests that Western media sometimes creates its own biased narrative about the country that refugees come from. In the following verse, the speaker then states, we can all be refugees. And this repetition of this line in stanza five uh, breaks the structure of the poem again. And it shows that becoming a refugee can literally happen to anyone. It's just a matter of luck. Then we learn that it takes a day. And the assonance here of A shows a country can literally fall apart rapidly. And then suddenly people are refugees there. It only takes a handshake that's and also a paper that's signed. So the reference to handshake and just a piece of paper that's signed, this is very innocuous actions, okay? Innocuous means like the action happens, it doesn't seem like a big deal. However, these innocuous actions have huge consequences in the lives of millions in our country. So it just takes a handshake between two leaders or a piece of paper that's signed and suddenly a bunch of people find themselves, you know, excluded from this country and they have to flee. Then the speaker states, we all came from refugees. So the collective statement, we all, links to the previous anaphora of I came. And it's binding the speaker and the reader because it makes us share in their personal history as well as reflect that we can be easily in the same position as this refugee person. Then they tell us nobody just appeared. And so here what they're doing is they're challenging simplistic ideas that people tend to attach to refugees that suddenly, you know, something happens and these refugees uh, appear maybe on the coastline of a new country. And here what they're showing is actually it's not as simple as just that. The speaker then states that nobody is here without a struggle and the powerful verb struggle lends power and agency to the refugee. They're just not this passive mass of people that get defeated by terrible events. They actually struggle against these events. They do something about it. Then they ask, and why should we live in fear of the weather or the troubles? And this rhetorical question is important because it shows we aren't powerless regardless of our circumstances. We can overcome just like how refugees overcome by fleeing somewhere. And this is part of taking back our power. Then the speaker states, we all came here from somewhere. And the words here and somewhere is interesting because the nondescript nature of these two words lead to the poem being applicable to literally anybody. So anyone around the world can become a refugee and we shouldn't deride them. We shouldn't criticize them for wanting to leave a terrible past in order to create a better life. So that's it when it comes to understanding this poem. I hope you found the analysis as well as the contextual explanation useful in understanding this. And thank you so much for listening.